Hello and welcome to GYSB Talks. Get your sexy back. Talks with host Carla Palmer. That's me. Welcome to another episode. This is the number one podcast for women 50 plus who want to elevate to their next level of optimal living. Here at GYSB Talks, we focus on a holistic approach to wellness, physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, emotionally, and in relationships. I am so happy and oh so grateful that you are here with us today and every week. Now, let's get into today's topic, shall we? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of GYSB Talks. I am your host, Carla Palmer. Yes, I am the host of Get Your Sexy Back podcast. So today we are going to be talking with Stephanie Julia. And the topic today is Give Me the Easy Button, How to Launch an Online Coaching Business While Working 9 to 5. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to GYSB Talks. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here with your audience today. I'm excited to have you. Yeah. So let me tell everybody a little bit about you. Uh, Stephanie is a business coach for online fitness coaches and the founder of Catch Flights and Fitness and Profitable Passion and Purpose, P3. Through P3, she offers aspiring and existing fitness coaches a clear path to success through one-on-one group coaching experiences. Her expertise is in guiding them to scale their energy and make more money without spending more time on their business. Woo, that sounds easier said than done, Stephanie. It is with a step-by-step blueprint. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The fitness industry, is it 80 billion? Did I read that it was an $80 billion industry or am I off there? Um, I actually don't know the number by heart, but it is in the high billions. Yes. Yeah. And growing and, every single mm-hmm, year. Mm-hmm. And then this country is getting unhealth, more and more unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. More and more support. We need a fitness coach for every person at this point. We, we really <laughs> do. We really do. Uh, this topic is, is kind of near and dear to my heart because I've tried online fitness coaching a couple of times and I don't have the blueprint. Um, so it's going to be interesting to have this conversation with you. Tell me how you got started being a coach. Oh man. Every time, um, I get that question answered, I, I pause and be like, well, fitness or business, but truthfully, I wouldn't have become a business coach if I didn't, if I wasn't introduced to fitness coaching. So fitness coaching started off, I wanted to build a community, Um, I wasn't necessarily struggling with my fitness journey. I just didn't want to do it alone anymore. And I felt very isolated in what I was doing. Um, but because of my job as a Homeland Security investigation special agent, I couldn't do the whole go into the gym, be, um, uh, a trainer, like in-person type trainer, do classes. So I built a community and ran challenges to, motivate my community of friends, family, coworkers. And I did that for years before I realized, oh, this is a business. Like, (laughs) I didn't think of it. I was just like, this is just something I do for me and for my friends and family and coworkers. Um, So it was when I realized it was a business that I started looking at business coaches and I saw what they were doing and the impact that they were making. And that it, that made me want to be a part of um, that movement, too. Um, I say it all the time. I want to show as many um, folks how to print their own money um, so that they don't have to feel like restrained or or, you know, you want to go on vacation real quick and I need five hundred dollars for spending money. Let me go print my own money real quick. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's really how, I guess, my origin story of how I even got to this point was I saw somebody that was, that created a business coaching mastermind that I was like, this is beautiful. Like, this is normal. Now we're, we're in it and we see it all the time. But um, went back then, that was the first time I was exposed to it. And it was, I, I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. And I wanted to create it too. When, when did you start your business? Um, Catch Fights and Fitness, well, I should say it this way, Inner Phoenix Fitness, that was my very first fitness coaching okay. business. Okay. Um, <laughs> Inner Phoenix Fitness was started in 2014. 
uh, Catch Fights and Fitness didn't come about. It started, the movement started around 2020. And the way that I teach it was uh, 2021. Um, and then the business coaching, I really got into that. I was doing it in 2020 um, unintentionally. Like I just, anytime I learned something, I was teaching it. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, in the way that I teach it now, 2021. Okay. So okay. I, this, soon after I launched Cash Spice and Fitness, I was like, this is the blueprint that everybody needs to know. And I started sharing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think you know, we're talking about business coaching, right? But this could be any business, anybody who is thinking about leaving their nine to five and wanting to launch their own business. It's scary no matter what business you are launching. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this conversation is the, the, the topic is kind of transferable as far as the content of this. Um, so how do you properly transition from having a nine to five to going into full time? coaching how do you properly transition <laughs> well um don't leave too early that is nope. one thing i definitely was ready to leave probably like a year and a half before i actually left mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but you want to make sure that you you want to make sure that what you're doing is something that you're always going to want to do at least for like five years that's what i say okay um and that you're profitable for six months out um, now those are like the logistics, I guess. How do you like really, uh, transition? I can only speak to what I did. I, I had to, because I, had, once I realized I really wanted to do this, um, you, you get like senioritis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Everything at work sucks. Right. Yes. During that senioritis moment, you really have to build some mental strength, um, pull back your energy from work. Like to be real, I work with uh, different different coaches who are working their full-time job and they have to learn how to re reprioritize the work. Now we're all, if you're a coach, you're probably an overachiever. You're probably working more than you're getting paid, right? Like you're, the, the energy you're giving to your job is more than um, what they're paying you. Yes. And I started to pull back and do what the I needed to get through the day. <laughs> yes, the bare, like, I don't even know if it was the bare minimum at some points. Um, but like coaching, like um, I love being a part of different coaching and courses. So I had to go to class, right? So I treated it like I was in school and in a nine to five. People don't, people don't second guess uh, going to school while you're working in a job, right? Like people do it all the time true but true. what's the difference if i'm building a business and getting education um at, on how to do it so that's yeah. how i treat it i see i see do, do you how do you manage the time though between the two did you so do one of my favorite, weekends or um and one of my favorite things to do because i'm i'm a very i'm i travel a lot so weekends sometimes weren't always available to me. Um, I utilized my work schedule. <laughs> and um, two things, two hacks that I give. Anybody listening to this, you could do this too. I, I'd love to challenge you if you feel like you can. Um, I negotiated a different work schedule. So I came in early and left early so that I could get on coaching sessions with my client. Because like at this point, I, I had clients because I was working while I was in my coaching uh, business. Um, so I wanted to have undivided attention to my clients and I didn't really want to coach them late at night. Okay. So I changed my schedule so that I could, um, so that I could coach in the like late afternoon and early evenings. Then um, my coaching sessions, I created professional development training sessions in my work schedule, uh, because it's true. That's it what is we're true. Because like, okay, I really did start to pay attention to how people use like education, educational opportunities. They would send me off for a week long training, you know, and and not blink an eye or hey, Steph, you got to go to this training 
for a whole day. And I'm like, I got work to do. What are you talking about? I don't even need this training. I ain't going to be here in six months. Let me <laughs> That's the scene. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but they would send me off the training all the time. So why can't I create my own trainings? You know what? You have a point as long as the work is still getting done, right? At the end of the day. And, and as an overachiever that recognizes overachievers real quick, I haven't met a coach um, that isn't one that mm -hmm. was giving their all to their job. And it's just now pulled back a bit. And, and nowadays I feel like uh, the, the um, corporate world recognizes burnout. And I was definitely in burnout. I had showed up and showed out for years on top of years. So they didn't, when I pulled back, they was just like, yeah, you know, this ebbs and flows, give Stephanie her time. And they did. Wow. No one blinked an eye. Yeah, and you were you were killing it at work though, because you have awards and everything. Oh yes, I deserve that pullback. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I, I I just wanted to make sure that people knew that we're not talking to the slackers here. We're talking to people who no. show up every day for work, bring their A game. Yeah, and you let me um speak to that because for years, so I was in that job for twelve and a half years, almost thirteen years, um, and for years I worked early in the morning, late at night, came in on the weekends, was was in uh, office buildings, writing affidavits till the middle of the night. Uh, there was a, I was with a dude that told me not to, that my laptop was banned from the bedroom. Like <laughs> I was a hard worker. So all I did was re re replace all that extra work with my business. And I'm so <laughs> glad that I made that reframe early because that's what allowed me to be so profitable when I was working my nine to five, because I prioritized me and my vision, not so much theirs. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, so you're a coach, right? When is the right time to hire a coach? Like somebody in this community is thinking about starting their online coaching business, fitness, exactly. Um, when is the right time for them to reach out and hire somebody like you? when you want to uh, move up to the next level at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not ignorant to the fact that there is such thing as YouTube university and you can learn anything on your own. <laughs> um, but you hire a coach, you get that education when you want to move a little bit faster, right? We're not talking about a degree or a certification program, anything like that, that stamp of approval that you can move on to the next level. I'm talking about like, if you, or if you are or, uh, desiring a blueprint because you've tried it, it wasn't working and you need some help in making it fit your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because that's something I never had. I had to fix those hacks that I'm sharing with you. I had to figure it out because any coaching program that I joined, it wasn't built for nine to fivers. Right. It was built for full-time entrepreneurs. So all those send the 30 friend requests, the 100 DMs a day, would be like, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it no, that's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So when you want to move to the next level or you've been at it and you're not reaching that next level in the way that you feel like you should. Okay, okay. Um. So when somebody wants to, so my audience, most of them are, in their midlife, right? We're all Gen Xers. We have some in their 40s and some in their 60s. But for the most part, like the target audience here on GYSB Talks is people who are in midlife. And some people have worked for years and years and now they're saying, you know what? I want to do something different. Or maybe they're retiring and maybe they want to do something like an online fitness coaching program. Do they have to be certified to be online fitness trainers? Ooh, I didn't know you was going to come with me with that question. So this is a polarizing subject. Yeah, no. it is. Let's <laughs> sure. just get your opinion. Yes. Well, it's a fact. The answer is no. So if you look back at the, um, the history of certification programs, like actually in NASM's book, they say the reason why they created the training certification program is so that it's like, okay, I know this. Here's my proof that I know this. So yeah. what we're missing by leaning so much on that certificate is the experience. Like just because like I could go, I could have no experience 
in coaching, no experience in fitness, not even have my own transformation, nothing like that. Read a book and you think that I can coach you successfully yeah. because I have that piece of paper. I call my my bachelor's degree a piece of paper because it does nothing for me now, but it allowed me to get that first job. That certificate allows you to get into a gym. It gives you it, it allows you to get that experience. Now, let me talk to the ladies that are listening that have that experience. Like if you feel confident that you could snatch me up, be like, Stephanie, let's let's go do this. Let's go get after these goals or or your ideal client. Right. Because I might not be your ideal client. Um, But if you can help someone, please don't don't sit back because that's like to me, a don't sit behind this piece of paper like, well, I don't have this, so I can't be of service to the others. You can absolutely be of service to others without the certificate. And I'm not in another caveat, I'm not saying the certificate isn't valuable, that you shouldn't go and get one. It's it's just another piece of education. Um, what I teach has nothing to do with the certificate. It's the, how to build a business, okay. right? Because that certificate isn't going to teach you anything about that. Okay. Do you do you show every and in your program in your blueprint you show everybody like how to get the business started, how to get it up and running, the back end, like all of that stuff? Like what do you, what do you teach exactly in your blueprint? So I teach them how to launch. So one of the blueprints is a launch blueprint. Um, that's the main blueprint is your launch. Uh, but behind that, that's more of the marketing and I'm not even on front. I do love uh, social media marketing, so I teach that. Um, but when you come to me, if you've never been an a fitness coach, uh, online fitness coach before, um, we create your offer. So uh, you, you'll have um, three levels. It's so funny because I just taught this. Uh, we went through this um, in my coaching program last week. That's why I smiled a little bit. because I was like, oh, it's literally what I talked about. Um, there's three offers. And I'll tell you why it was a, a lesson. Everybody thinks of an offer as like your high ticket coaching program, your fitness plan, your meal plan guide, your your mindset routine, all that. But um, I like to teach your the the free and lower ticket offers as offers because it's a reframe. So, for example, your content marketing or your free Facebook group is an offer. It's a it's just a free offer. So when you show up and you feel drained, it might be because you're doing too much in your free offer and it doesn't provide a proper energy exchange. So um, when they to answer your question a little bit more clear, when they come into P3, we help them create their offers, their product suite, um, how to you're it's, you're given a blueprint on how to launch it in the way that respects your lifestyle your energy exchange your time all of that and um scaling strategies because one thing that i learned from working in my nine to five and um building a business at the same time was that i couldn't do i couldn't follow the same path as full-time entrepreneurs i couldn't do organic marketing for years and then go to um into scaling strategies (laughs) and nobody had time for that yeah. Um, I had to implement scaling strategies right after I launched, and I'm so thankful I had the, 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 I don't even know what made me do it, to look for it. Honestly, I don't, I just knew I needed something else because what I was doing wasn't sustainable. Okay. So um, I teach uh, brand new coaches how to scale their offers by building teams and automation with ease, because I can't say that I learned it with ease, but I <laughs> that's what I make sure I teach it with ease because it is a lot and it takes some time. But knowing it right away is so important for sustainability. Mm-hmm. And you, you do you encourage virtual assistants and all of that for people who are building these businesses? Absolutely. And there are virtual assistants out there that will take tasks off your hand that have you uh, spending hours out of the day, out of your precious day. Right? We we already talked about not having a lot of time that will do it for pennies on the dollar. Like it's so cheap these days. And there's so many people that want to just help. Um, And I'm just a big proponent because it's even sometimes you're like, you almost feel like you're giving back. It's like, I could do that, but now I don't have to. And this person is so grateful and so thankful for me um, bringing them on my team. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I I just got a, an assistant to help with some of my podcast stuff, and it, it was like a game changer. Seriously, a game changer. Yes. So I believe in it too. I believe in it too. And you know what? I would have spent the money some other kind of way. I really would have. Whether it would part. be, you know, a couple of dinners. Um, that part. That food. It, it, oh. With wine, right? It's like it's so expensive to eat out. So stay home and get you a virtual assistant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I can't even say I spend that much on my virtual assistant. It'll be like other team members, but they're so valuable um, when you bring on team members. It's scary. It is scary. But one tip that I wish I heard uh, when I first started, so I'm going to just share it with everybody here. If you bring it on team members, have uh, having your savings, like launch your, so what I teach your first launch, try not to keep any of it. You didn't have it before. <laughs> put it away and and reinvest it in your business and create a savings for your team. So I like to have three months of savings for the, for the team so that when the, cause we have dips, you know, yeah. there's some times where the month you didn't feel like doing maybe as much as you wanted to do, or you focused more on your clients or you're learning more than you're doing, whatever the reason is, or you're training your team, whatever it is. So have that savings so that you can see the, the you can see the the rewards of of building that team um over time and not feel pressured and they don't feel pressured to to um increase your revenue in month one Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i like that too because you're also building discipline around you know what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur that money is not yours to go out and buy a new something right Mm -hmm. it's not (laughs) <laughs> to build a bit, like I'm in the mindset. I want to build a company. I don't want to build a business. Mm. And when I, when I heard it was an affirmation, I am building a company. That's all it was. I'm just like, I am. <laughs> like, what was the, what was the distinction between the two? Did it did, did it define that? Mm-hmm. So um, it was so the so building a company was all around team building that you are you are going to have department heads at some point in time. You're going to have uh, coaches that are client facing. You're going to have co- uh, coaches that are more of a system. Like it was just building out a bigger vision for how you see yourself working inside of your business mm-hmm. and and seeing it now so that you can make decisions moving forward, right? Like it's not that you have to have a company right now or the or the way that it's described to have that company. It's build out your vision now so that as you're making decisions over the next year, you're making decisions in alignment with that vision. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And also, you know, what I do want to remind the audience is, you know, a lot of us are director level or managers and, you know, there are so many transferable skills that we have acquired oh. Over these years, I mean, I'm in my 50s. I've been working a very long time and I've had a number of different roles. I've been in, you know, a direct report and I still am, but I report to my CEO because over the years I've leveled up in my career and there are so many things that I could take away from working and managing people and, you know, managing budgets and things like that, that could transfer over into running a business. And so for those of us who are at that juncture where maybe we were we are retiring or thinking about it or thinking about leaving our nine to fives and going into entrepreneurship full time, we have a lot that we can offer in that space because of our history, our work history and, and our careers over time. So I just want to remind people, yes, it might be a little bit scary, but we have what we need and we can continue, like you said, to continue to educate yourself. But we can do this if we want to do this is what I'm Absolutely. trying to say. Yeah. Absolutely. Just and I also want to go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying like think service first, just be of service, like build that community. That's how I started to be real. I didn't start. I didn't, I didn't start with catch fights and fitness. I started with a, uh, with a community that of people that I just wanted to support and serve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the imposter syndrome? We talked about that a little bit when we were talking about doing this segment and how that's a real thing and how we work through that. If you've ever felt it or if your clients ever feel it, like how do you help them work through that, those feelings? 
Um, absolutely. So I definitely uh, have experienced it and continue to at times. It's not something that I, uh, you know, believe will always be there as strongly as it was because I definitely feel differently about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's because of what I'm going to explain here, like what I do to, to reframe my mind there. Um, so one of the, probably the more famous stories of mine is when I created Cash Fights and Fitness, I launched it on the back of a challenge and I was so excited about this challenge. I'm not even going to front. I still think about that energy. And I was just like, ah, ah, what happened? But I was so excited. I was going to have, like, in my head, I was going to have a $10,000 pot. I had a sponsorship opportunity in this massive Facebook group. And um, <laughs> someone, I, I, it was a hundred dollar challenge. I wasn't used to charging a hundred dollars, but I made this dope challenge. I was like, hey, I'm charging a hundred bucks. Um, and someone sent me an email privately, like from a fake account. Cause when I tried to email them back, it was, the, the account was deleted. Um, and they basically just bad mouthed me saying how I looked like I didn't, how dare I, um, charge for anything in fitness because of me still being on my journey. Like I was still, um, I don't want to say I was overweight, but I was definitely like on my fitness journey. I did not look like my, the typical Insta model. Um, <laughs> like that, that's what I try to compare. Like I wasn't the personal trainer that you usually see with my, with my six pack showing and all that. No. Um, and I don't pretend to be at all. Uh, so when she said that it really hurt. Yeah. Because I never saw myself as anything less than because of the way that I looked. I always um, saw my value and led with what I was able to do for my clients and what I was doing for my clients and and what they what what I did for myself. Um, but she even had some like money triggers in that email. It was it was rough to the point I got so upset, but I was like hurt and then I got angry. And when mm -hmm. I got angry, I went live <laughs> and I went live and I shared it with my community. I told my friends, my family, everybody literally descended upon my challenge. And that challenge led to the 15K launch of Catch Fights and Fitness and really like propelled me. Sometimes I think back, I'm like, hmm, what if I didn't, what if I let her like get to me and I just canceled everything? Because I really didn't have to do it. Yeah, like I had a really good job. I was creating something that excited me. But what if I used th that moment to kind of get go within and listen to what she was saying? And be like, yeah, how dare I, mm -hmm. you know, be you know, be of service to these this community when I look like the way that I do. <laughs> but I'm so glad. <laughs> but I'm so glad I didn't. Not just for the money and the success that I have for Catch Fights and Fitness, but. <sighs> I have to use this as another example because everybody in the world probably saw it. If you're connected to Peloton, y'all see the the black woman um, fitness trainer, or she's a rowing instructor for Peloton. I wish I could remember her name, y'all. If y'all listening, it's something you can comment on. Just comment her name, shout her out for me because I really wish I could. But she made me see, she doesn't look like the typical Peloton instructor. Mm-hmm. And seeing her was another reminder, yo, you still have value and there is going to be a community that rolls up for you yep. because of the way that you look, because of the way that you move, because they they feel seen when you show up. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. suggestion and my tip for my clients and for anybody that's listening that's struggling with, uh, should I do this when I'm still on my journey? Because it, it it triggers my heart. It hurts my soul when I hear it. Yes, because if I didn't, if I didn't um, continue and launch, first off, I don't think I'd be here right now. I really don't. I don't think that I'd be talking to you like this. I think that I that would have stopped my vision. I'd be a special agent for Homeland Security. For, like I probably would have just stuck with the job that I had. Um, but then again, like what what it did was allow other people to feel like they can which is a ripple effect ripple effect amongst our community to um help our community right i love that generational wellness 
concept that's been going around lately. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is I have clients that have had amazing transformations that if I didn't have the courage to launch, they would not, they may not have had that opportunity that I, that because I said yes to my vision, they were able to do so. And that even goes into the business coaching. If I didn't create Catch Flights and Fitness, I wouldn't be helping people print their own money, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's just a ripple effect when you, when you say no to your vision, when you say no to your purpose. Yeah. And we also, you know, I think like self-care and self-affirmations and really just speaking positively about yourself and your strengths and what you have to offer the world on a daily basis is really important. And then understanding too, when people make comments like that and they're hateful and come off as mean spirited, they're struggling, they are just projecting and that's an internal thing. And it's, it's, it's still hard to hear yeah. and, and not take on, but it's so not about us. So I have a affirmation. I'm glad you brought that up because it reminded me of an affirmation that I wrote. Um, now, this was after that experience, but I still write this affirmation down to this day. And it is my program transforms my it, at the time was my program transforms minds, bodies and spirits. My client like I speak life into my client results like they were my affirmations. Now, you know, it's a little bit different with the business coaching, but as a fitness coach, like I knew my value, but I still want to continuously speak life into their journey as I, you know, work on my own mindset routine. Because what does that do? If I say my program transforms lives, my program snatches waste. <laughs> like, yes, I might say it to myself and to my friends, but every morning starting my day with those affirmations is so powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So powerful. All right. So um, I think I have uh, two more questions. Um, do you have anything coming up that you want to share here so people can look out for? Um, there's always an opportunity to connect. I'm always doing something. I'll be real with you. I love live events. So at the very least, I have a masterclass that I am in love with right now. Okay. Um, and it's probably, it's, it's going to be around forever. So even if you're listening to this like a year later, I'm still there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's called automate your client, um, your client attraction system. So what I was talking about with launching, but on the back of launching your fitness business, you are uh, implementing scaling strategies. I talk about that um, so that that organic marketing, you're always doing the DMs, the network expansion, all of that. On the organic side, I show you how to use a paid fitness challenge to monetize your automations right off the bat. So then you can keep your um, high ticket coaching program. Um, what do you want to call it? Like the, the, the money you earn from that and just use your paid fitness challenges to automate everything. Okay. So that, that class is um, grow your online fit com slash automation. Mm -hmm. But if you go to slash podcast, grow your online fitness fit girl, your online fit com slash podcast. Um, podcast. Um, I got a free gift there for you guys that I really would love for you to check out. If you're curious about what like an online fitness coaching program looks like, feels like, and what a launch sequence um, looks like. So. Okay. I'll make sure that I put all of that in the show notes okay. so that people can just click on it. Mm -hmm. um, question for you. What is a like one thing on your bucket list that you have to do before you leave this earth? It's funny because I just did it. I just did one, so I need a new one. Oh, but what was the one that you just did? Go to Egypt. <gasps> and when did I you do that? that? I did it in November, around Thanksgiving, because I spent Thanksgiving in Egypt. <laughs> oh, my God. that's like my favorite holiday, so it was wild to do it in Egypt. Um, but, uh, I was obsessed with Egypt in college. I took international studies as a, uh, one of my majors mm -hmm. and every class you had to pick a country and I always pick Egypt. So I know Egypt's law, 
<laughs> I know their politics. Wow. I don't know it anymore. I don't know it anymore. I'm not even front. But I took like all these different versions. I was obsessed with Egypt. So to be able to go there and go there with um a couple of my friends, um oh, Lauren and Aspen, it was a it was a it was life changing. So I'm sitting here trying to struggle, like what is what else? I need something else. But yeah, being on I the think- Nile River. The what? The Nile River. Oh, I haven't been. So I, I'm going back again so we could go together. <laughs> okay, listen, that'll be a part of the catching flights for sure. Um. All right. So last question. So GYSB it stands for Get Your Sexy Back, right? Um. I want to know for you when you first heard the word sexy. I don't whatever age you were, like what you thought about that word and how has how has that word evolved for you? Hmm. first response to it it was more of a physical appearance like sex oh sexy people look really good they have but here's I don't know if this is real but when I was younger I remember thinking like you have like a perfectly proportioned face I don't know if that's based off of anything um but now sexy is a vibe so it's your confidence your yeah it's like it's how you feel is way more internal now. And I'm not going to, sometimes I struggle with it. Sometimes I struggle to to tap into that vibe. But anytime I'm in it, I look in the mirror and I see it. Right? So it's just like, it's, it. it's interesting how like it evolved from just physical to being uh in like emotional, internal, but it, but that's what makes the physical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to feed our spirits with the right things, right? Visually, um, auditory, auditory, like whatever we're putting into our heads and our minds, yes. like it's so important because that is how we're gonna feel about ourselves. And I love it when I when I'm in a good headspace and I've done all the right things for the last couple of days. It's just like I feel super sexy at any size, you know. Right now I'm up a little bit, but. I can still, I, yeah, you know, I'm up a, a lot bit with this menopause, but I still, I went to the beach yesterday and I posted a little video. Like I, I said, y'all going to get all this, these thick thighs. I still feel sexy. <laughs> okay. But like, yes, at any size, you can't at be, any size. you can't be in your, you got to Or it's not that you can't, but you got to try. And I, you said something, I just don't want anybody to miss this, that what you did for the past few days it ain't no, <laughs> let me do a couple of affirmations and be like, all right, let me look in the mirror. I still don't feel it. No, you got to do the work over and work. over again. But yeah. if you just put your head down and do the work and move through, it's going to pop off for you, sis. Like, it never fails. It never fails. It never fails. It never fails. Ah, and these podcast episodes never fail when I have great guests on here. You know, like I liked you the moment I met you when we did our, our pre-interview. I was like, oh, this is a cool chick. I like her. And I, <laughs> I yeah, I knew um, even though, you know, you're not in the, the 40s and 50s age group, I still knew that you had something valuable that would resonate with the audience. Um, because like I said during the conversation, like this information is not solely for people who are trying to leave their nine to five and start an online fitness coaching business. It's if you're trying to leave your nine to five, there were nuggets in this conversation that you can grab and take away and apply to whatever it is you're trying to leave your nine to five and do. Yeah, so, really yeah. Um, all right. So I will make sure at the bottom of the, the show uh, in the notes that people know how to stay in contact with you and me. Um, but I'll tell you now, if you want to stay in contact with me, please do. First thing you can do is turn on your notification and follow the podcast episodes, the podcast here on, um, I'm on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and we'll be putting this up on YouTube. So wherever you are, turn on your notifications, hit the follow button and go and do it on the other platforms as well. And then if you want to stay connected with me on social media, I am GYSB Movement on Instagram, TikTok, and on uh, YouTube. So follow me there. And then... um, that's all I have to say. And Stephanie, what's your Instagram handle? The Stephanie Julia. And it's Stephanie with an F. The Stephanie Julia. That's her Instagram handle. Follow her. She's great. She posts all the time. 
um, and has definitely put up things that have inspired and motivated me. So please follow her. And until then, everyone take care. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you on the next episode of GYSB Talks. Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. All content on this podcast and any linked blog, podcast, webinar, course, or video material is created and produced for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied on as health advice. The information is general and may not be suitable for your personal circumstances or complete health objectives. Do not use this content as a standalone resource to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease for therapeutic purposes or as a substitute for the advice of a health professional. Never delay seeking advice or disregard the advice of a medical professional based on our content here on this podcast. If you have questions or concerns about your health or medical condition, please seek guidance from a medical professional.